Ear. Jerk. Snort. Snort. Ear. 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 Woo wee! That's woo wee! Spanish niggas riding around in their car with their shirts off. You know that. You know when it's summertime in New York, nigga. You see them Spanish niggas with their shirts off driving their whips, nigga. It's on, nigga. Girl, I just finished listening to that K7 too. Come, baby, come, baby, baby, come, come. If you gotta give me loving, then you gotta give me some. Come, baby, come, baby, baby, come, come. Niggas on AK7 shit out here early, baby. Chill, Lord. You're not cutting me off. We just scrapped to the death, but you're not cutting me off. You're, that's all I'm saying. I slam the door when I come into the bedroom. It's really good though, man. You know I'm driving, so I'm gonna have to get back at y'all when I when I get to somewhere safe. You heard? Ground Zero, I appreciate you. Appreciate you, my brother. Appreciate those kind words. No days off. Network was popping. Greg Johnson, you heard? Life Stories TV was really hood. But yo, man, my nose is still stuffed up, man. It's rough for me, man. I can't be on live with the stuffed up nose, man. You heard? Can't be on live talking about come baby, come baby, baby, come, come. Then you gotta give me love and then you gotta give me some. You know, that's my goal to get that song. That's my goal today to get that song stuck in all y'all niggas' heads. If you a 90s nigga, I'm gonna get that song stuck in your head for the next two weeks. You're gonna be like, come baby, come baby, baby, come, come. If you gotta give me love and then you gotta give me some. Nigga said, I slam the door when I come into the bedroom. Because I'm the king of the castle. I just finished taking that shit back twice. I'm in my car listening to that shit. I heard that shit on the 90s station today. I jumped in the car just now. I said, I got to ride out to that. Had to find that on YouTube. Take that back twice. That shit had me crying. Niggas was going extra hard <laughs> On the videos in the 90s, boy. Man, listen, man. It wasn't it wasn't a lot of videos back then. So when a nigga had an opportunity to get a video in, niggas had fireworks. Niggas did it up for that video. They don't make videos like that no more at all. Yersk and Dyson was populated. Shorty D was popping. Steven Ortiz was really hood. Yeah, them lessons, them lessons, them lessons episodes was real controversial, baby. They real controversial, baby. You heard? Had all type of agents coming at me after I dropped them lessons episodes. You heard all type of niggas was pretending to be to be allies and all of that, man. Want to argue with me about lessons all day. And all of them got bombed. You heard? All of them got bombed. Trying to test my sword. Had to bomb a couple of individuals. Story of my life. Dude's testing the sword. Then when I pull out the Ginsu. Pause. I slam the door when I come into the bedroom. And this traffic looking like nasty work, baby. This traffic looking like nasty work, baby. It's nasty work, baby. Let's go, let's go. Nasty work. I wish the fuck I would turn down that shit. That shit looking like three parking lots. That shit looking like movie 2012 when everybody was trying to escape out the city and the highways wasn't even moving. That's how that shit looking right now. I seen a nigga get hit by I seen a nigga get hit by a car yesterday on a motorcycle. 
You heard? Shout out to that brother, man. You know what I mean? I ain't mean to leave abruptly like that. But I just went over there to make sure a nigga wasn't severely hurt. Like, leg off or some shit like that. Because then, you know, I would have had to try to help a nigga stop bleeding or something. But, um, the brother seemed to be half ass all right. But, you know what I mean? Chick hit the dude. She's standing there talking about, are you okay? Like, my nigga, that nigga ain't, that nigga ain't okay. Half his bike, you done broke his bike in half. You feel what I'm saying? He's sitting on the ground and rolling around in agony and pain. Get on your phone and call an ambulance for that brother, bro. What are you talking about? Is he going to get up? Is he okay? You just smashed that nigga with your car and knocked his motorcycle in half. And he's on the ground. What are you, what, what are you talking about, my lord? That shit was bogged out. Like, it was some racial. It was kind of racial to me, like. What you mean, my nigga? Like, she was saying shit like, "Are you you gonna? Are you able to get up? Are you okay?" Like, bro, listen, you just hit that man with your car. Get on that jack. You gonna have to hold that in premium increase up. You gonna have to hold it, man. Don't worry about it. Geico got it. They going you know what I mean? They gonna hit some with a little 30, 40 racks, and you'll be all right, bro. You know. They might not want to renew your insurance next year. I mean, next six months, they might be like, yo, all right, we can't fuck with you, man. You hit niggas in the middle of the street and all of that, man. I think the bro was riding down the street with her lights off. You heard? You can't be now. You can't. You can't be having them lights off. Word the mother, man. Gunny Walker in the building was popping. Kenny Korea was really good. my jeans man Psh, I wanted to go downtown and hop on live but the way this traffic is looking the Knicks play tonight though baby the Knicks play tonight baby if the Knicks win tonight they will win it all. Oh, man. All we need, I'm going to tell you, I was talking, shout out to my bro, John Dilly. I was talking to my bro, John Dilly, earlier, man. Like, let me tell you what we were saying about these Knicks, man. You heard? What we need to win this game tonight? We need Jalen Brunson to keep going to the hole and keep getting fouled because his free throw percentage is through the motherfucking roof in these playoffs. And that nigga draws good fouls. Get these niggas in foul trouble early in the game. Get these niggas the same shit, the same way y'all played that last game, running and gunning these motherfuckers. That's how niggas got to play tonight. And I'm not no super basketball expert. You know what I mean? I'm just letting it be known. The running gun, like the nigga Barkley said, I think it was Barkley. He was like, if you try to play these niggas at half court on a half, in a half court style, they going to crack your ass. The Knicks cannot be forced to keep taking threes and all of that. Nigga, run and gun that shit into the paint and draw the foul or get the basket, my nigga. You heard? Do not let these niggas get a chance to even think or communicate. Run and gun these niggas UNLV running rebel style. You heard? And that is the formula to beat these motherfuckers. You heard? So, I'm going to be very hype. Listen, I learned a valuable lesson. I, <laughs> I love my Knicks, but I don't bet on the motherfuckers no more. I learned my lesson from betting on them niggas, my nigga. You heard? I love them. Want them to win. But when it comes to my money, my, the word money and Knicks, with me, I don't know about with other people, but with me, it's a no-go. I almost got into some shit up north for betting on the Knicks. I bet a nigga a motherfucking, I think it was a carton of cigarettes, I bet a nigga on the playoffs or whatever, and the Knicks, the Knicks won, the nigga owed me a carton of cigarettes. 
and the nigga wanted me to run it back on another another team that wasn't my team. I'm like, yo, son, I don't bet on no team but the Knicks. You heard? I'm not, man, I'm not betting on no other team. And the nigga was mad. You know what I mean? And the situation, and the situation almost occurred over that, my nigga. I learned a lesson from that gambling shit and all of that because the nigga was about to get bodied. I'm going to keep it real with you. I told a story, I think, on the channel before. But, you know, one of my mans, one of my mans was about to hit that nigga for real. Send him up out of there for real in a bag. You heard? And I ain't wanted to get that deep. <laughs> Straight up. I was a little nigga. These niggas was grown ass men. That nigga was like, man, that nigga don't pay that carton tonight. I'm laying them. That nigga paid that carton. You heard? But, um, yeah, man. Nigga was a slime boy, though, trying to dead a 17 year old nigga. You a grown ass 40 year old triple X felon. You trying to dead a uh, little nigga. He wasn't dead in me on that, Lord. You heard? He was not dead in me on that yarding. He was not dead in me on that carton from that carton from Fresh Prince, nigga. That carton Fisk. I wasn't trying to hear it. You would have got seen, Lord. Nah, I'm just fucking with niggas though. That's I don't got no hard feelings towards niggas, man. That's why you can't be gambling in jail, you heard? But you was fucking with it. You was fucking with it. Yup, you was fucking with a chop too, though, nigga. You that same nigga. You was fucking with it. You heard? I ain't forget, my nigga. You was fucking with a nigga named Frank. <laughs> I used to be up north like this nigga ain't here fucking with a nigga named Frank. You heard? You wailing out, Lord. Nigga ain't here. You ain't here fucking around with some nigga named Frank. Nah, my nigga. Nigga was an old gay number hole runner or something. Man, how these niggas jail shit crazy, son. That's my word. I was in a jail. <laughs> I was in a dorm and it was it was a, a gay guy in the dorm and a nigga name was Frank and that nigga just looked like a regular old white cab driver. You heard? Nigga just looked like an old white cab driver with glasses. And nigga still was running up in that nigga buns. I'm like, damn. I'm like, these niggas is putting on a setting a bad example for a youth nigga like me. Like, this nigga look like a whole cab driver that smokes cigars and eat corned beef sandwiches. And niggas is running up in that nigga bun cakes. Like, this shit crazy, nigga. I got to get home, baby. I got to get home. You heard? I said, you know what I mean? Niggas is wild up in here, nigga. You don't know men. You don't really know men. The people think that we always on here talking jail stories. And we always caught up in jail but the real reason why this jail shit is so intriguing is because <clears throat> when you go to jail for a substantial amount of time it's kind of like you become a psychologist you feel what i'm saying because you're forced to deal and live and thrive and get around and get along with so many different criminal profiles and so many different psyches that you kind of got to navigate and teach yourself psychology a little bit in order to survive through that shit and with your sanity. You heard? So, like I was saying, you don't never really know men until you've been it in jail with some men. You see sides of niggas that you just be like, damn. You heard? You will be shocked. You'll be like, oh, shit. That nigga did that? Yeah, that nigga did that. Wow. You heard? Shout out to... Shout out to the series Guard of Guns. I'm about to drop a new episode maybe tomorrow. Tomorrow, maybe tonight, depending on how I'm feeling. But, um... Come on, it's too cold in here now, Lord's Lee. But, um... Yeah, we talking on that episode about some real strange characteristics of niggas in jail that niggas ran into. Nigga done ran into some strange characteristics now. You heard? Gets crazy. 
Straight up. Some niggas is like that. Like some niggas is animalistic, bro. Like when they in a certain environment, they just they just turn into an animal like person. And they may go into the streets and never be like that again or never engage in something that they engaged in. Drugs, whatever, violence, gangs. Some niggas do that shit in the can, my nigga. And then you see them niggas in the streets and they ain't on none of that shit at all. Be like, but damn, this nigga was in the can, dude. Nigga ain't on none of that shit. Nigga a total different human being in the streets. You feel what I'm saying? Some niggas is like that, bro. They are not the same human beings in the streets that they are in the can. That is a that is a fact. Told y'all niggas, I ran into a nigga that was my man's up north. This nigga was my man. Two niggas, two niggas I ran into that them niggas was my man. <coughs> Them niggas acting like they ain't know who the fuck I was, bro. You heard? Some niggas, that shit just be all an act in the can. Like, everything. Everything be an act. You heard? Nigga love. A nigga swag. Every, all that shit be an act, nigga. Nigga get, nigga get out them doors. It's over. Nigga be like, fuck everybody in that bitch. Straight up. If you ain't never seen my story... When I was in Franklin, if you ain't ever seen my story, um, a crackhead taught me the game. Make sure y'all go check that story, man. Put in St. Laz a crackhead. It's fucked up that you got to say St. Laz a crackhead, but you put in St. Laz a crackhead taught and it's going to come up. You heard? And that's the story. That's a true story about a dude that was my man's up north that, you know, son was a crackhead, man. And son, son was the realest nigga I ever knew in my life. Straight up. But now I know niggas up north, man. <clears throat> niggas be super supreme masters. Niggas be the deepest niggas on earth. Nigga cure cancer. Nigga do all type of magical shit. But when a nigga get in them streets, <sighs> nigga be street some nigga. Ah, man, that shit's scary, bro. That shit's scary how what jail is, man. You know what I mean? That shit, that shit, some niggas just be adapting like, yo, this is who I am in here. But when I go home, I am I'm this person now. That shit be real. But yeah, man. I'm driving, so I can't touch this jack because I'm on a hit out way. But yeah, man, them knitted eggs play the knit of the night. You heard? I got some new heat coming to the channel. Mega heat. Mega heat. Make sure y'all subscribe to that Gen Pop TV channel. We stirring up. We got about 3,100 subscribers, subscribers now. You understand what I'm saying? Yo, let me tell y'all niggas something how I feel about some shit too. I ain't see the whole video, but I saw... A piece I shouldn't even be speaking about it maybe if I ain't see the whole I don't give a fuck if what the whole video said. But um like I see niggas online talking about that uh the shit with the kid that playing BMF that got caught with the motherfucking <coughs> shit in the airport. Like niggas is toxic online, my nigga, because niggas be 16, 17, and and, and, and black people and niggas from the hood and all that niggas be expecting a nigga to be a fucking criminal like you so you 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 16 you 17 you black niggas expect you to have mad criminal knowledge and criminal ethics already like nigga i thought the goal of this shit <coughs> I, th I thought the goal of this shit was to get niggas out of the criminal lifestyle and out of the hood but like I said, I ain't see the whole video, but I saw that little clip where he was like, yo, sir, I'm a minor, this, that, this, and that, blah, 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 blah. Like, bro, that shit is a federal charge, gun charge. Of course that, of course that young man is scared for his freedom. You understand? Niggas is throwing black niggas in the penitentiary and giving them niggas 20 years for nothing. You feel me? Nigga ain't trying to be that. You feel me? So I don't know the whole scenario with the gun and all of that shit. I just don't like what I saw on the internet, niggas like, oh, this nigga, this nigga sound like a little, I don't respect that, bro. That nigga's a child, bro. That nigga's a kid, man. That nigga's a young man, man. You feel what I'm saying? Nigga trying to grow up. 
nigga be his nigga doing something positive and successful. Niggas expect the nigga to be a fucking hardened criminal. Like, is that what y'all niggas want for y'all own sons? Like, that's what makes you proud of your son? Like, yeah, my son know how to hold his head with police. No, nigga, you shouldn't have or want your son in the streets at all. You understand? Oh, shit. Look like the feds just ran down on the nigga. Word of my they got the whole F F D um F D R shut down. They wasn't looking like no regular police. I ain't get a good glimpse, but it was some weird badges and uniforms. That shit got the whole F D R shut down right now, and they got some niggas in custody or something. That's my word. That's looking crazy over there. But yeah, man, niggas be wanting their kids to be hardened criminals and gangsters and murderers and shit. N not niggas be wanting their kids. Niggas be wanting the youth. You heard niggas be wanting 16, 17 year old nigga, old niggas are, yeah, that's right, shorty, you a hard and criminal, yeah, fuck out of here. Me and this nigga Saquon was just having a mad deep conversation a little while ago, we gonna do an episode called State Down. You heard, and there was science behind that episode, we was talking about how you ever been up north and you meet a nigga that he just be state down, and it's his second, third bid, and he don't give a fuck about none of that shit. Nigga be like, nigga, I don't want no lamps, no velour blankets, none of that shit, nigga. I'm tired of this jail shit. That's the concept of that episode. Some niggas get to a point, my nigga, where they just sick of this shit. You heard? Like, sick of everything, my nigga. The jail shit, the street mentality. Like, yo, bro, listen, my nigga. You heard? I got I got rules that I, I live by with this channel shit that I stand by, ethics that I stand by, you know what I mean? Codes that I stand by. But sometimes... Niggas codes be silly. You understand what I'm saying? Like sometimes your code is immature and silly, my nigga. You heard like these niggas be niggas be bogged out. Niggas be 60 year old niggas and they 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 basically motherfucking uh encouraging the youth to be criminals. Like, nah, my nigga, you can't keep encouraging these niggas to be criminals, my nigga, because they get killed and they do 20 and 30 years. You understand what I'm saying? A, of life of a life of misery. Know what I mean? It's like real talk. Like some of the legends that we speak on this channel, like speak that we speak about that's not on the channel, that them niggas is in the pen with a hundred years and all of that. Believe me, you. Believe you me. If you meet some of these niggas in real life, some of these niggas will be like, young blood, I don't, don't want to talk about none of that shit. I don't give a fuck what I sold, how much cars I had, how much jewelry I had. I'm in this motherfucking penitentiary with state clothes on, eating soups and, and drinking coffee the same way these niggas is. You feel what I'm saying? So I don't deserve none of that. What I needed to do was get my life together and do things the right way. That's how a lot of, a lot of these alleged niggas will give it up. If you meet them in real life, niggas be like, man, fuck all of that, man. Yeah, I had that. I moved 30 keys a day. Yeah, but was it worth this shit right here? Nah, man. It wasn't worth none of it. You feel what I'm saying? So, you know, not all of these motherfucking legends is the type of niggas that, you know, they cool with the streets still. Some of these legend motherfuckers, they hate the streets now. They hate the streets and everything that shit stands for, bro. Real talk. You heard? And if you not a nigga that's trying to help niggas stay out of the streets, they don't like you either. You heard? If you ain't a nigga trying to prevent niggas from going to the can and doing a hundred years and getting murdered in the streets, they don't like you either, bro. You know? Because at a certain age, you get to a certain age, bro, where... You should be you should you should you should be wanting a detox. Like you need some toxin that some of that toxins, some of them toxins gotta come out, my nigga. Once you get to a certain age, my nigga. You heard? If you say if you still at a certain age, you still 40 something years old, and you know, you impressed by certain things, you may you may want to consider thinking about your mental health. You heard? You still you still impressed by certain shit you still you know you still want to be involved with certain shit at a certain age you be like nigga what the fuck niggas want to be in the club niggas want to be where everything where, where all the real niggas is going to be at it's a sickness my nigga you heard because you got a certain age 
if you ain't concentrated on you supposed you supposed to be concentrating on financial security for you and your kids and family for generations to come. If that's not the folk main focus on your mind, you ain't you you not really focused, bro. You understand what I'm saying? Cause that's all I can fucking think about. You heard? Like, you know, my son having a motherfucking my kids having a house they could call their own, like, you know, if I'm when I'm dead and gone, nigga. You know, I ain't never got to worry about the sleep, sleep in peace, knowing that my kids got a roof over their fucking head with some property in their name. And in case it get hectic, they got a place to stay at least. You heard? And, and a couple of businesses out there generating some income. You understand what I'm saying? Or a couple of or just sitting on a good chunk of bread that's that's working for them at all times. You feel what I'm saying? Cause that's some deep shit, bro. Like I told you in that movie Breaking Bad, one of my favorite lines in the movie Breaking Bad. I mean, my fault. I'm driving and can't read the comments, but as soon as I pull over, I'ma read them joints. You heard? But in the movie Breaking Bad, when that nigga was like, when that nigga was talking to the nigga Gus, that was my favorite character on Breaking Bad. That nigga was the realest nigga ever. The nigga who worked in the chicken shop. That nigga was fucking smooth, nigga. That nigga said. <laughs> And nigga was like, men, we provide. Even when we not appreciated, we not loved, we not respected. We still, if you're a man, you still are a provider. Nigga said, nigga, even be providing in death, nigga. In death, men be gone dead. And the family still living off of pop's money, daddy's money. The grind daddy put down in the streets. You understand what I'm saying? Or I mean in business when he was here. Like men be providing like a motherfucker, my nigga. You feel what I'm saying? Women too. Women get it in too. But a man, we be sick if we can't provide. Like if you a real man, you be sick if you can't provide for your family and you can't provide for everybody. When you a man, you want to provide for everybody that needs, my nigga. When you a real man, you feel me saying you just got a burning sensation. You're like, yo, I got to feel like taking care of everybody. Sometimes that shit is unrealistic and you can't take care of everybody. You got to pick and choose who you need to take care of. You understand? But when you a man, you have you don't like none of that, my nigga. You don't want to hear nothing about nobody needing shit. None of that. It could be a third string family member. You heard that shit could be a third cousin. And somebody be like, yeah, you know, such and such about to... uh." Lose their apartment, it's nothing, it's nothing. There's nothing you could do about that because you're not in a financial situation where you can help every single member of your family. But deep down in your in my heart, I'll be like, if I had it though, nigga, I'll just I'll just real nigga call that. You heard? Yo, look, what? They need how much? 10, 15, 000, What? Yo, here, go get them 20 cent, man. You heard? Go get them 20 cent. Send them to bring them 20 cent. Tell them to pay that motherfucking bill and, and try to keep they head, try to keep it together, man. Holler at me if it get crazy. You feel me? It's like, that's the real shit to do when you got some real bread. Like, you know what I mean? Don't ever let me get rich, nigga. I'm going to be like the fucking phantom. Be like the phantom of New York, nigga. Niggas going to tell legends about me. They're going to build statues. Because I'm going to be doing so much ill, real shit. It's going to be a rap, nigga. You heard? I'm going to be competing with big. So I done heard stories about big and shit like that. Like I read a story like even Faith Faith Evans is a real she real bro. Like I I read an art, a, a article in Hair Magazine when I was up north. You know when you up north, nigga got any magazine with a female in it. You heard? So we used to have Hair Magazine because we used to have all the badass bros with their hairstyles. So I was reading an episode of issue of Hair Magazine before with um with Faith Evans on the cover. And she was talking about, she was giving it up. She was like, yo, man, you know, Biggie was a street nigga. And Biggie used to blow through money taking care of all his niggas. Like, every nigga he was with, he was spending bread on, he was making sure everybody was all right. He said, so it was a lot of times, Big would go broke in a week, nigga, get an advance. That should be gone in a week, a month, gone. You understand what I'm saying? So, at the time, Faith had guap. You understand what I'm saying? She said, yo, that nigga used to be calling her. Like, yo, I need some bread, man. What's popping? And she used to be hit going to the bank with that nigga and just giving that nigga 40 cash. 40,000 like this. Whole list. Boo! You heard? 
And she was like, that was a regular. That was on the regular. He'll call me, yo, what up? Yo, Faye, what up, man? I need some guap, man. What's your pappy? And she'd be like this, yo, meet me over here. Here go 30. Here go 40. So she was like, a lot of times, Biggie was running around the streets with a pocket full of money because I was smashing that nigga. And that's a real chick, bro. That's a real chick. You feel what I'm saying? But it's like, you know what I mean? That's the type of motherfucker. Like, and then that story about the nigga Big that Mr. C told. But that nigga said he was fucked up. Nigga said he was fucked up in the game. And Big, he was blowing. But you know what I mean? He was, you know, he was fucked up. He ain't had no bread. Nigga was about to lose his crib and all of that. You feel me? He owes some paper or whatever. Nigga said he called that nigga Big and was like, yo, man, I mean, I don't want to ask you for shit, man. It ain't my style to be asking you for shit, man. But I'm fucked up. I ain't got no paper. Now, I mean, I'm about to say he was crying to the nigga Big. You feel me? He said nigga Big was like, what? Yo, where you at, man? Yo, where the mother man? Meet me over here on such and such and such. Now, I mean, I don't know. I don't want to get the number wrong, but I think the nigga um, son said he just hit that nigga with a brown paper bag with like. 30,000 and that shit or something like this, yo, here, man. Fuck is you talking about, man? You peoples, man. Don't be sitting around broke and fucked up, not saying nothing to niggas, man. What the fuck, man? Hold this bread, man. And you don't owe me nothing, man. You heard? Nigga, Mr. C was like, he couldn't believe that shit. How, how that nigga just was like, what? You know, where you at? You heard? That's that Gemini gang shit, nigga. That's the type of shit we on. But anyway... Yeah, man, I'm going for I'm going for legendary shit like that, nigga. You heard? I'm popping up like a pop tart. Let me get some motherfucking billions. <sighs> Listen, I grew up knowing how to motherfucking. Listen, nigga, we stretch a can of beans. My grandma, Puerto Rican grandmother, she was she was legendary for they. My, the whole family be like, listen, your grandmother, she'll take one can of beans and feed eight people in the house. Niggas tell magical legends about my grandmother like she had one chicken wing with eight and one can of beans. The whole house ate and was full. Telling you, son, my grandma's she fed everybody, nigga. You come through that door, she don't even gotta know you. My Puerto Rican grandmother, Lucy, rest her soul. You come through that motherfucking door, nigga. I would bring all type of filthy mongrels from Brownsville. Up there, yo, son, you hungry? Come on, we gonna go to my grandmother's house to eat. Soon as my, my niggas walk through the door, she be like this, wash your hands. Wash your hands. She don't ask, do you want to eat? Are you hungry? Ain't none of that, my nigga. You come through the door, wash your hands. Wash your hands, get ready for your plate. My grandmom's like this, freaking seeing that shit up, nigga. My niggas from the Ville... She throw that yellow rice with that motherfucking fried, Spanish fried chicken that don't got no flour on it. You heard? With them motherfucking beans, with them olives in it floating around. Them rice and gondoles. You heard? Listen, bro. Niggas was like this. <laughs> Niggas down there biting their whole fingers off. You heard? Yo, son, your grandma. You know, everybody say that about their grandmother, but I'm keeping it a hundred, son. My Puerto Rican grandmother, her food game was different. The only, the only other old lady that I know that could contend with my grandmother is my nigga Sid grandmother. They make the same tasting food. Everything tastes just like my grandmother. But I've tasted a lot of Spanish food that wasn't on my grandmother's level. But my grandmother, my grandmother's Spanish food game, that shit was different. You know, she making all that from scratch. Ain't no frozen sofrito. Ain't none of that, nigga. She got the wooden joint and she bashing them onions and garlic together on her own. You feel me? That shit was different. When my grandmother died, nigga, that shit took a piece of my soul because I knew I would never taste that yellow rice the same way ever again. You heard? I said, damn. That yellow rice and gondoles. Oh, God. You know, this is when a nigga, you know, I wasn't always God body. You know, I ate a chop or two. I ate a chuleta or two. You know? 
I had a chuleta off 12 or 200, you know. But, uh, you know, my grandmoms, man, man, listen, man. She fried them chops up now. You heard? Peace, peace to the gods. You heard? Love y'all. But we talking about in the early 80s when Z-Boy was a Stone Cold 85 -er. Them chuletas was right. You heard? I found, I ain't gonna lie, I ain't even gonna hold y'all, nigga. I found, a, I found an essay, man. My wife found an essay from me in the second grade, man. When I wrote an essay about pork chops, man. I'm just keeping it, man. They gave us an assignment. They said, write about your favorite food. And, you know, I wrote about the chops, bro. I wrote about the chops. Niggas gotta forgive me, my nigga. I wasn't always G-O-D. I wrote an essay about the chops. I said, man, them shits is delectable. <laughs> I was using vocabulary that a second grader shouldn't be. I said, man, them shits is juicy and delectable. You heard? When you bite them. Yo, son, if I let y'all niggas read this essay, y'all niggas will never let me hear the end of it. Anytime I see somebody in the streets, niggas will mention, bring that shit up. So I got to just, it's going to be in my documentary. It's going to be in the documentary, bro. You heard? But, um, y'all niggas ain't never gonna let me live that shit down when y'all hear that essay. Because I was talking about them chops like them shits was, like I was gonna marry a pork chop, nigga, one day. That's my grandmom's fault, though. And then my mom's, she kept it alive with the black style pork chops, you heard? Then my mom, she get the smothering pork chops. You heard? See, it be different in that black household. My mom, she get the smothering the chop with some gravy. You heard? When we come in from a long day of playing basketball in Howard Park and Brownsville houses and all of that, and you come in the house 8, 30, 9 o'clock, you starving. And you go on the motherfucking kitchen stove and you lift that top up off that plate that's in the middle of the stove, and that shit got about six chops on it. You heard? Shit got about six chops. You look in the pot of some mac and cheese with some sweet peas. With some canned sweet peas or something, you know. And that Louisiana hot sauce was sitting on the counter with, with the caked up, dried up pieces of hot sauce flakes on the joint. You heard? Them chops, man. That's all I'm saying. You heard? And all y'all niggas know y'all was fucking with them rib tips from the Chinese restaurant, too. Let's cut it out. Niggas was going there. Yo, let me get... Yo, let me get an order of rib tips with pork fried rice with an egg roll with roast pork in it. You heard? And I need extra barbecue sauce and hot sauce on them ribs. Niggas be ODing on the Chinese niggas, man. Yo, put more of that shit, man. Nigga done gave you half the bottle of barbecue sauce. Niggas like this. Yo, what's up? You got my shits, man, dry. Niggas be like this. Nigga be like, this nigga, man, you cheat with some fucking barbecue sauce, man. The niggas be like, damn, how much sauce y'all black niggas like on shit? Niggas be like, yo, son, you ain't putting no ketchup. Put some more ketchup on my fries, my nigga. Niggas be like this. Ugh. Niggas just give you the bottle. Here, here, here you go. Here. Niggas be like, this is how you do it, son. Nigga, the whole fries be red. You heard? What type of eats is that, nigga? The whole fries be red. You heard? I be violating French fries. I'm going to keep it real. I be putting ketchup, hot sauce, and tartar sauce on them shits. You heard? When I'm broke, I be pissing, pissing niggas off. Like, I go to the uh, I go to the fish spot on Dykeman, and I be like, yo, let me get an order of fries. You heard? They be like, that's it? You know, they used to niggas coming in there getting eight jumbo shrimps with clam. I be broke. I come through there. Yo, let me get an order of fries. They be like, that's it, just fries. Fries, nigga, that's what I said. Just fries, unless you want to give me some money to buy something else. But for now, I just want fries. Or sometimes I get the tostones. You heard? I be like, yo, let me get an order of tostones. They be like, that's it? Yeah, just tostones, bro. Can I just get that for three cash? Get them niggas that three cash. Them niggas be having an attitude like this bum-ass nigga trying to buy a side. Them niggas be rolling their eyes at me like... Shh. This bum-ass nigga want to spend $3 and use half the condiments that we got. 
You heard? I'd be like, nigga, I'm hungry. I need all of that sauce, chunks of relish inside the. To me, I need it all in my stomach right now. You heard? But now the fish market on on Dyke, man. Listen, man, I'll be going there. I'll be getting a yellow vegetable rice. They make that Spanish, you know, that Spanish vegetable rice that Spanish people make with the corn in it and the, and, the, and the mixed vegetables and that shit. They make that yellow Spanish rice and they shit taste right to it. Don't taste like it don't taste bullshit. Like, you know, it tastes like real Spanish vegetable rice. I get that shit. I throw the toast tones on that bitch. Squeeze all type of hot sauce. Ketchup and tartar sauce all over that shit. Them niggas be pissed off. They think I'm trying to be cheap and I'm not trying to buy no fish, but I'm a vegetarian. I mean, but you know, them Spanish, they don't even understand that. They be like this, what? You're a girl. They be looking at me like I'm a girl. Like, you don't want no, you don't want no oysters or nothing like that. Nah, nigga. Rice and tostones. That's it. And I'm straight. Secretly, I be getting the tostones because I secretly miss fried fish. So, you know, just the taste of the fried fish on a tostone does a lot for me, man. I'll be satisfied. You heard? But yeah, my G's, man, we about 15 minutes to them Knickerbockers. We about 15 minutes to them to them New York Knickerbockers. And, you know, it's a lot of stress. It's a lot of stress having to win a game. Like, when you up a game or, you know, it's tied... And it ain't the last game. You know, it ain't that much stress on the fans. But when a nigga got, when we got to win the game, that shit is stressful. You feel me? Yeah, man. Word, man. Oh, shills, Nick. This nigga walking around with a motherfucking. You know I'm on my new shit. I think gotta go on my Instagram. You lucky I'm on live because you would have been on my on my shit, Lord. But y'all gotta go on my Instagram, man, because I be wilding out on Instagram. Know what I mean, I got an episode up there right now on my Instagram called Bub Bub Patrol. Where I'm riding around the city looking for niggas that got on bubble coats while it's hot like this. You know how a nigga don't check the weather before he go out and he go out with a bub on? I'm looking for niggas, bro. I already caught one nigga. It's on my Instagram page. 87 cash. Nigga walk around with a bub. <coughs> so I'm on the lookout, baby. What you doing back there, shorty? Hey, yo, I get respect even from the shorties. Come through. Come on, heavy bub patrol. I see, I see, I see an old black lady with a thick jean jacket on, but I ain't gonna put her on the bub patrol. You heard, but that, that, that jean jacket is hot. That jean jacket is hot, baby. That shit's steaming. I'm gonna give you a pass because you're an old lady. And it might be a little chilly to you a little bit. But I'm looking for some bubs. And if I see one, they getting exposed on live. Straight up. Soon, I'm just going to start approaching niggas. You heard? Approaching nigga out here. Yo, what's up, my bro? Can you explain to me why you got on a bubble coat and it's 80 cash out here? Explain to the viewers on live. Hey, my lord. This nigga got his whole back. This nigga's walking around with their shirts off, man. It's your shirt on, man. It's your fucking shirt on, man. I'm tired of y'all six-pack ass niggas, man. I'm coming out with the dad bar this summer, nigga. Fuck that, man. I'm gonna stop acting like I'm gonna get in shape. It ain't happening. Nigga almost 50 cash. You heard? I'm just I'm rocking the dad bar. That's it, nigga. Going to Coney Island this summer. I ain't wearing no shirt in the water. None of that. Dad bod. You heard? Now, if I go to amusement park, you heard? 
you know. And I'm one of the minorities in the amusement park. I'm going to throw a good shirt on. You're going to see me in the kids' pool with a Nordica shirt on or something like that. But on Coney Island, I'm letting y'all niggas know. So don't run up on me if you can't look at the dad bod without feeling a certain kind of way. Because I'm going to have a gut out and all that, nigga. I'm going to have a gutty ranger out and all of that. Gutter music. You heard? I'm going to have a gutter music out, nigga. I don't care how niggas feel. But you in my genie bags. D Markham, yeah, it's like 80 cash, about 70 something right now. It's nice, it's nice, baby, it's nice. Major game, man. Stop talking about my boys like that, man. You're talking about the Knickerbockers like that, man. You heard? They're going to show up tonight, my nigga. It's a fact. Word to mother. Gunny Walker, wish poppin'. Katie Kidd, wish poppin'. Freddie Acevedo, I see you in the building. Eli from Jersey, wish poppin'. Come on, man. These niggas hiding my... I gotta take that setting off my shit, man. Because there don't be no hate up in here, man. I don't gotta have hard messages and all of that, man. Dub Huncho, wish really good. John Adams, what up? Anytime television, wish poppin'. Drastic, wish poppin'. D. Joseph was really good. King Loyalty was popping. Mikel was really good. And Dyson was popping. Kenneth was popping. Darius M. was popping. Making sure I ain't miss nobody in the building, man. Easily is what's poppin'. Yeah, my nigga, Dad Bard Gang. That's the new gang we start. We starting for the summer, my nigga. Dad Bard Gang. You heard? Rapping that DDG. Dad Bard Gang. Fuck out of here, nigga. Coming outside with the motherfucking. Sweats on, whole gut out like this, shirt off, what's popping, what up? What's really good? Walking around Coney Island, watch. I mean, straight up. You know, chest looking a little soft and flabby and all of that, nigga. I'm out there, Coney Island, what up? Swimming and all of that, what's popping? Making sand castles and all of that. You heard? So when you be in Coney Island, this. This summer, and you see me over there, you know, by Nathan's and all of that, getting the onion rings and the fries together with all type of hot sauce. Ooh, them boardwalk prices. Ooh, my God. It's inflation now. Them boardwalk prices on Coney Island. One time, them niggas got me so bad, son. I was starving, son. You know how you go to Coney Island? You be like, no, I'm going to be all right, man. I ain't going to be hungry like that. I'll be eating something afterward. You get in that water, nigga, your stomach be screaming when you come out. And you tired of that pizza from across the street and all of that. I don't want that shit. I want some real boardwalk food. Nigga, I was so hungry. I went to the boardwalk one time. Nigga sold me a veggie burger. Word to my mother. I'm trying to be a vegetarian. I'm like, yo, you at the wrong place to be a vegetarian in Coney Island. So I'm like, yo, man, what y'all got, man? I don't got nothing. Man. I don't got no fucking veggie burger. You know, I'm used to niggas having a big brolic veggie burger come with fries, pickles, lettuce, tomato. You know what I mean? Son, this fucking bro gave me a veggie burger that just was a bun and a burger. That shit ain't had no ketchup, no onions. <coughs> Bitch just gave me a bread and a fucking burger. That shit was like $14.99. I said, yo, they killing me out here, my nigga. I had to go find some ketchup on the boardwalk and put that shit. I'm like, yo, this shit is the worst. Maybe it got a little better since then. But um, them boardwalk prices, man, them shits, be, them shits be hefty. This inflation, them shits going to be hefty, hefty since sack. You heard Nathan's be acting crazy. You heard that y'all niggas be trying to act like y'all dumb, mad, exclusive and shit. I had a little, got into a little spat the other day with a Nathan's nigga. You heard, you know how you be hangry 
and you just can't find nothing to eat, you keep running up on different niggas. So I ran up on some Nathan's nigga in Manhattan and shit. Now, you remember that Nathan's nigga used to always be right there on Fulton Street, downtown Brooklyn, right on the corner, across the street from the um courts and shit, where the where, 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 um where Shake Shack is at now. It used to always be that nigga that had the Nathan stand right there downtown Brooklyn. I used to bang son in the head all of the time for them Nathan's fries. Yo, boom, you know what I mean? he, hit the, he knew me, he seen me coming, he would start making my shit. You heard? Tried to run down on one of them niggas in Manhattan the other day. I forgot where I was at. I was hungry. I said, Dad, I'm so hungry. I'm just going to get an order of fries from the Nathan's nigga. I went to the nigga. Oh, it was over there on 59th Street, Columbus Circle, matter of fact. I said, yo, let me get an order of fries, my G. Small order of fries, man. Yep. That's five cash. 455 cash. Nigga told me some shit. $859. I said, what? What the fuck? What? I said, a small order, nigga. He said, yeah, it's a small order. I said, son. Ain't no small order of Nathan's fries, no 859 cash, son. He said, yo, this is Manhattan, man. I said, I hope you hungry, my brother. You heard? I hope you in the mood for some fries. Or you throwing them shits back in some oil later on tonight. And double fry them bitches. Because I ain't paying no 859 cash for no motherfucking no small order of fries, nigga. You bucking. Nigga gave me the small Nathan's paper shit with like eight fries on it. Talking about eight fifty. I said, nigga, listen, you could boof that. You could boof that, bro. But anyway, man, what time is it, man? Them Knicks about to come on, man. I'm about to go see what these niggas is doing, man. You're. Yeah, son. Prices out here is just crazy, bro. These shits is crazy, yo. You might as well eat out, my nigga. That's my word. You might as well eat food outside. You might as well go to restaurants and eat, my nigga. Because that's how much you paying for a meal. I be going to the supermarket. I be buying one meal. That should be 35 cash, 40 cash. Just for one night's dinner. You heard? That shit come up to 40 cash. I be like, what the fuck I bought? Everything be high, nigga, in New York. I don't know how it is everywhere else, man. But in NYC, it's rough out here, nigga. Everything is high. All that money they gave niggas for stimulus checks, niggas is paying all of that shit back and then with interest. That's what that shit is about. Niggas took so much money with that stimulus shit, niggas like, all right, we need all of that back with interest. Hold these prices down. <coughs> But yeah, my genies. Will Cash Grow was really good. Don Weezy was really good. And why Lynx was popping. I don't know how to say your name, my dude, but one was populating. Her. JR15 was popping. All right, I'm out of here, man. I got a feeling I'm missing the fucking game. Probably came on by seven. I'm in here running my mouth. But I'm going to holler at y'all dudes, man, later on if the Knicks win. If the Knicks win, I'm coming back on live running my mouth crazy. You heard? If they lose, y'all niggas won't see me until the new season start. You heard? But I'm going to scream at y'all dudes. Holler at me.